Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. We were flying over Nagoya at 30,000 feet and our top turret gunner was up on a pedestal. His seat was and he, he was looking out the top of the airplane. We were looking out the sides and he fell in my lap. He passed out from lack of oxygen and they told us if we were out of oxygen for 15 seconds, we'd pass out and in a minute we'd be dead. And so. He passed out and fell in my lap, so I disconnected my oxygen hose because I was getting oxygen, and I plugged him into my hose, and I plugged into his, and then I stood up and pushed his regulator wide open. It has a demand-type rubber regulator, and I pushed it wide open, and, and I had on a, a flak suit and a one-man dinghy and a jungle survival kit on my rump and I had on a backpack parachute. and I weighed about 250 pounds, and, and at that altitude, the air is so thin, you don't get much air in your lungs, even if you're on pure oxygen. And I had his regulator shoved wide open. I climbed up into his chair because all the Japanese fighters now were coming in head on, because if they came in on a tail chase, we'd just shoot them down. And they came in head on at 300 miles an hour, and we're doing 300, so 600 mile an hour closing speed, they couldn't hit us. And, and we would be lucky if we hit them, but anyhow, I climbed up into his chair and sat in, and I had on an infantryman's helmet, and he had a special black helmet, but it was, his oxygen mask was tied to it, so I didn't want to take it off, because he'd already been out of oxygen for some time, and I knew in a minute he'd be dead. So I shoved my head up into his gun sight, and it pushed the helmet to the back of my head. I'm laying there like this, looking straight up, and and I still had my finger on his regulator holding it wide open so I'd be sure to get oxygen. And everything went gray and then it went black. I couldn't see, but I was still conscious and I held my finger on the regulator. Pretty soon my vision came back and there was a Japanese zero right above me. And it, me just waking up, I just threw the gun sight on him and fired. We flew 30 missions, and after we flew two missions, we flew over Japan with just 36 airplanes to begin with. We were the first ones over there. And, and we had three crews, three squadrons of 20 crews each, but we flew 12 airplanes from each squadron over Japan. And the first two missions, we didn't have any fighter cover because fighters couldn't go that far. And uh, we lost an airplane on the first mission, we lost an airplane on the second mission, and then if you figured you had to fly 30 missions and there were 36 of you flying, there'd only be six of you left at the end of the 30 missions. And so we were up cleaning our guns and Sam was the same position as me on his crew. And, and he said, you know, Dale, he says, I think the Lord will take care of me. But he said, if anything should happen to me, would you go see my mother and dad in in San Diego and I said yes and he was their only son they had two daughters and and Sam and and then Don he was a radio operator on his crew and he said yeah he said if anything should happen to me would you go see my mother in Broken Arrow Oklahoma and I said yes and then I said but I'm not going to ask you to go see my folks I said all I can do to is is plan to live until the Lord takes me home and I'm not going to ask you to see my folks and, so after the war, I had to go see Sam's folks and Don's folks. They were both killed. When I got home from the war, I got home on my birthday, uh, my, my 21st birthday. I got home in Tucson on a troop train. They sent me to El Paso, and then they gave me a delay en route back to Santa Ana. And 
And so I was home on furlough for a month, and I went back a day early to, uh, to see Sam's folks, and I got to Yuma, and they said the war was over. And I got to El Centro, and they said, no, the war isn't over. I was on the bus. And then I got to San Diego, I didn't hear anything, and I knocked on Sam's folks' door, and, and his dad invited me in. And just as I walked in the door, Harry Truman came on the radio and said the war was over. And I couldn't tell him anything. I had to go outside and cry a little bit. <laughs> and so Sam's folks, Sam's dad followed me outside. And, and after I got a hold of myself, I came back in and told him what happened on the night that Sam went down. And his mother was expecting him to be a prisoner of war. All they knew was he was missing in action. The government sent him a letter saying he was missing in action. And I told them all I knew, you know, I was there when the three airplanes went down. And 